Hey everyone, welcome back to Jazz Bean Kitchen. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is a what I eat in a day video and I'm super excited for this one because we're finally transitioning into the springtime, which is my favorite season. I'm an April baby and as soon as the days start to get longer and warmer, I just feel like an entirely new person, just more inspired both in and out of the kitchen. So today I'm gonna be sharing a few recipes inspired by the season that are healthy and light and full of color and fresh vegetables. Today's video is in partnership with Kroger, which is my go-to grocery store. They have every Everything from the best quality produce to all the pantry staples that I need. They also have an amazing selection of vegan friendly products and that list is growing day by day. And I love that they offer an amazing selection of produce grown locally here in Colorado. So thank you so much to Kroger for supporting the channel. And now let's go ahead and dive into our recipes for today. All right, for breakfast, let's kick things off with these vegan mini frittatas. I actually made these earlier in the week. They make a fantastic meal prep recipe because you can make a batch, refrigerate, or even freeze them, and then just heat them up. You can eat them on the go if you need to, and it's a serving of vegetables and some protein. So you'll need about a cup and a half of any kinds of vegetables you like. Today, I'm using some chopped asparagus, some red bell pepper, and some caramelized onions, which can be a little bit time consuming to make, but they're so flavorful, I think it's worth it. And to do that, just heat some oil or vegan butter in a pan, add in your chopped or sliced onions, and cook them on medium heat for a long time, anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. Stir them frequently, and if they start to stick to the pan, add in a little bit of water to deglaze it. When they're finally done, they'll be super sweet and tender, and they'll be a nice, rich brown color. Whichever vegetables you choose, add them to a bowl along with a carton of vegan egg substitute. I just seasoned mine with a little bit of salt and pepper, but you can add any spices you like, such as garlic powder, onion powder, some dried chives, or other herbs. And if you wanted to add any vegan shredded cheese, this would be the time to do that as well. Now take a muffin pan and generously grease it. I also like to add in some little parchment circles at the bottom just for extra insurance, since Just Egg does have a tendency to stick. I find that about one and a half cups of vegetables and one carton of just egg makes just enough to fill all 12 cups of a muffin tin. And when you're done portioning out this mixture, pop them into a preheated 350 degree oven for between 20 to 25 minutes. They should be slightly puffed up and golden brown around the edges. Definitely try these mini vegan frittatas out if you are on the hunt for a breakfast option that is savory, filling, easy to make, and can be made ahead of time. And like I said, you can customize with any vegetables. You can even add in some vegan ham or sausage and any kind of vegan cheese you like. Okay, breakfast. I have reheated a few of my veggie frittata bites. I'm actually serving it with rice and ketchup, which is a super nostalgic, very comforting combination to me because my mom's side of the family is Filipino and rice is obviously a staple. So I remember every time I would visit them for breakfast, we'd have tons of rice with our bacon and eggs or sausage, whatever we were having that day. So every time I have eggs and rice and ketchup, it just kind of reminds me of that time. Plus I wanted to kind of round out the meal because there's protein and veggies in the frittata bites and I wanted to add some carbs in to kind of fuel me today. Little bite of everything. These are just so good. I think I'm gonna make a batch at the start of every week for the foreseeable future. Probably the next combination I'm gonna try is like a vegan ham, cheese, and some spinach and onions. Maybe some bell peppers. So I finished breakfast. We are out and about running some errands. And on the way back home, we're gonna stop at our local King Supers to pick up a grocery order that I placed earlier. I normally really do enjoy grocery shopping in person. I like taking my time, browsing all the aisles, but it is really nice on days when I'm busy to have the Kroger grocery pickup service available. So you can just hop on their website, select your local Kroger family store. You can see all the sales for that week, put everything in your cart that you need. You just select a date and a time slot that works for you to pick your groceries up. And when you arrive at the store, you park in one of their designated pickup slots, call the number, and then a store associate comes out, brings your groceries, helps load them into your car for you. Really quick and easy and convenient when you're busy and it's free on orders over $35. So I placed an order this morning for the groceries that we will need for the rest of this week and we're just gonna pop on by our King Supers and pick those up. These fresh vegetable spring rolls are a staple for me every year when spring and summertime roll around. My go-to veggies for this are cucumber, avocado, carrot, and lettuce. But you can get creative and use any veggies you like. 
My local Kroger also started stocking Thai basil, which I was stoked to see since it's been really hard for me to find it since I left San Diego. So I have some Thai basil to add to these, but you can also use cilantro or fresh mint or a combination of the three. I also like to pan fry some tofu to add to these for some extra protein. To prepare that, I take a block of firm or extra firm tofu and slice it into strips. I also like to lay them out on a clean kitchen towel and weigh them down with a cutting board to press out any extra liquid. Then I heat up a little bit of oil in a pan and add my tofu. This time around, I season them with little black pepper, salt, onion, and garlic powder. Give your tofu strips a flip every few minutes to evenly brown all sides. Then you'll remove them to a dish and you'll want to allow them to cool before you add them to your spring rolls. While you're cooking your tofu, you can also boil some rice noodles if you'd like to add those to your spring rolls. If you want to keep these like salad rolls, you can also just replace the noodles with something like shredded cabbage or any extra veggies you like. Once your rice noodles are cooked, you'll want to run them under cold water to chill them. I also like to toss them with just a little bit of sesame oil to prevent them from sticking while I'm preparing the rest of my ingredients. So I've julienned my cucumber and carrot, I've sliced up my avocado, I've plucked my Thai basil leaves, and I've rinsed and dried some lettuce. Once you have all your ingredients prepared and assembled, it's time to roll. Eric and I usually just take turns here. We had a few large spring roll wrappers, and once we ran out of those, we switched to these mini wrappers. I actually really like these. I can only fit about half as many ingredients inside these, but they're so cute and they're super easy to eat in a few bites. Lastly, I threw together a super simple peanut sauce. This is roughly equal parts peanut butter and hoisin sauce, then some chili paste to make it spicy, some soy sauce, and some fresh lime juice to brighten it all up. Whisk together and it's ready in all of five minutes or so. These make the best lunch or dinner, especially during the warmer months. And as a plus, if you prepare extra ingredients, you can use those leftovers to roll more spring rolls later on in the week. For dinner, we're going to be making a delicious kale and white bean soup, which I feel like is the perfect transitional meal between the colder months and the springtime because it is warm and cozy and it's packed with veggies, but it's not as heavy as the stew I might make during the winter time. I like to give my celery, carrot, and onion a fine chop. To prepare the kale, you'll want to give it a thorough wash, remove those rough stalks, and give it a coarse chop. If you're not a big fan of kale, feel free to substitute in fresh spinach. And lastly, you'll want to peel and cube one or two potatoes. I used russet potatoes and mince as much garlic as you'd like to add, which for me was about two tablespoons worth. With all your veggies prepped, go ahead and heat up a pan over medium high heat. Add a little bit of olive oil or vegan butter. And if you'd like a little bit of spice, add in a few shakes of red pepper flakes. Then add in your onions and celery and saute for a few minutes. Then toss in your carrots and garlic. Saute all that until it's tender. Now you'll pour in your vegetable broth and add in your potatoes. This recipe calls for two cans of rinsed and drained white beans. And in my case, I'm adding only one can of whole beans and taking the remaining can, pureeing with a little bit of water, and then adding that into the soup. This step is completely optional. You can add in both cans of beans whole, but this is just something I like to do to make soups a little bit creamier and thicker without having to add in a ton of cashew cream or other vegan cream substitute. I'm also seasoning with a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder, as well as some dried rosemary. Bring your soup up to a gentle boil, reduce the heat to low, cover it and allow it to simmer for 15 to 20 minutes or until those potatoes are nice and tender. Now you're gonna add in your chopped kale, stir that in and then allow it to simmer for an additional five to seven minutes or until the kale is wilted and tender. I like to finish mine off with just a little drizzle of cashew cream, which is just raw cashews blended with water. This will make the soup just a little bit creamier, but it is optional and our soup is done. So that wraps up today's What I Eat In A Day video. I hope that you enjoyed, can maybe draw some inspiration from it. Thanks so much for watching, especially if you made it to the end. And thanks again to Kroger for sponsoring today's video. You all can check out the link down below for more seasonal recipe inspiration on their website. And I'll see you very soon. Bye.